welcome to Saturday Shred Show. I'm Chris Crow, and this is the internet's most stoked surfboard show. Shout out Gregory in Hawaii and Mikey on the Gold Coast of Australia. You both won our nets in last week's episode. More chances to win in just a couple minutes. But first, the 2,000 year old words of Seneca. What makes a woman beautiful is not her ankle or arm, but when her total appearance diverts attention from the individual parts of her body. So according to this Roman philosopher, if a girl is truly beautiful, you just say so instead of saying she's got nice eyes or hair. And if all you can say about your girlfriend is that she's got a nice ass, what you're really saying is she's not that beautiful, but she's got a nice ass. In surfboard design, I think the same is often really true because when our attention immediately goes to some crazy new tail design or a really fat nose, what we're sometimes saying is that it doesn't look like the board was designed elegantly with beauty and function in mind because one aspect of the board's design screams out above the rest of it, sometimes at the sacrifice of overall performance. It's really easy to see a balanced and flowing outline when you look at a surfboard because what you don't see is any angles in the outline line or any sharp angles in the tail. Noticing a smooth flowing rocker is a bit harder to see. On this board, the rocker flows smoothly from center towards the tail and the nose without any big changes to its curvature or flips in either direction. And this tail lacks any sort of sharp edge that we would normally see on a squash tail or a square tail. It's often said that sharp angles in your tail can create sharp angles in your turns because of the way that an angle here in a wing or here in your tail creates a blunt edge for water to release off the bottom of your board in spurts. But this kind of a tail outline allows for water to release off the bottom of the board progressively across all points on the rail line throughout the back third of the board, which helps you feel a continuous linking of your turns as if every maneuver that you do flows right into the next one. Looking at the outline, we can see that the wide point is placed just slightly forward of center. Dimensions on this board are 5.8 by 19.125 by 2.312 thick across the stringer. And this board is probably what you would ride in good waves if your normal shortboard for good waves was a 6.0 with a little bit less width and the same thickness. Now why would you surf this board instead of your standard 6.0? Because even though the increased width from rail to rail might make the surfboard a little bit less responsive, it would help the board generate more speed on its own so that you don't have to work for it down the line in good waves. Medium style rails that aren't so tapered down to the point where they'd really want to knife into the surface of a really good wave. In fact, these rails probably have a little bit more volume than you may be used to on a normal shortboard. Trusty Straight Edge tells us that we have a very moderate single concave, evolving into a very light double concave through the fins to a flat out the tail. That says a lot about how this board will surf because many shapers would say that a very subtle double concave through the fins on a board like this would help it control speed better and make it a bit more fluid going rail to rail. That's because two separate flows of water Water are easier to manage with your heel and foot than just one giant river of Poseidon gushing through the whole of the board. But if this board did have just a single concave throughout the entirety of the board, that would be a hint that this board would do best on rail in big gouging turns that you really have to shove into, push to get the board off of its tracks to get into a huge turn like, and then you just power through. But having this little bit of a double concave here might really help you flow and pump better across walling sections where a single concave would kind of want to stick to the face and not let you cover as much ground as you're pumping down the line. Now why does this matter so much on this board? Because with increased width, shorter length, and fuller rails than what you may consider a traditional round-tailed shortboard, this board will do a great job at generating speed and good waves and our priority now becomes controlling that speed. If you can imagine yourself looking down the line going front side on a wave that's a little bit overhead and has a nice steep wall to it and you just see one long giant makeable section ahead of you, I really think that this is the board where you move your feet up just slightly and then you just pump and flow and pump and flow all the way down that line to the exit until you move your stance back again and then you just do one long giant sweeping arc on the shoulder that makes all your friends go nuts. This is a very clean, elegantly designed surfboard with a lot of flow and elegance to its lines and you can expect that that's how a board like this will want to surf. With smooth flow down the line, clean wide arcs, and lots of fun and good head high waves. To possibly win a free pair of Arnett sunglasses, drop a comment below telling us what fin system you surf and why. The future is FCS glass ons. Do you make your own fins? In about a week, we'll pick one of you and send you some new shades from Arnett. That's it for this episode. If you've ever surfed the Panda Black Moon, please tell us what you think in the comments below. Also, tell us what board you surf when the waves get head high and fun. If you like the video, click like, not the thumb, but the button below the video on the left. For more episodes, click subscribe, and we will see you next Saturday.